Today I'm going to talk about the acquisition of Nokia by Microsoft. How rational was the decision? <coughs> this, uh, the acquisition of Nokia's handset and devices for 7.1 billion by Microsoft is nothing but an internalization strategy <coughs> decision. To internalize means to strategically buy another firm's asset in order to grow your own business, grow or expand your own business. Like all strategies, it has both its benefits and costs. Here we take the case of Nokia and Microsoft, uh, where Microsoft uh, internalized Nokia for the growth in the smartphone market. <coughs> Microsoft uh, wanted to enter the smartphone market uh, with a hardware. Um, they were already in the software game. They had the Windows uh, operating system in this, uh, as the software. But in recent years, uh, it was uh, there was less incentives for other smartphone makers to use Windows operating system because of the well-established and ever-growing Android operating system. <coughs> Therefore, it was not feasible <coughs> for Windows operating system to exist. Sooner or later, uh, Windows operating system would become obsolete <coughs> and uh, in order to revive uh, its own company, its own operating system, Microsoft acquired Nokia. Past numbers show that Nokia consisted of 87% of all Windows operating system phones sales. This was a significant number that Microsoft could not ignore. <coughs> that Microsoft could not ignore. Nokia uh, at, at that particular moment was losing money, it was bleeding money because of poor management. <coughs> uh, even though it was growing in the uh, phones market in the emerging countries, but uh, it wasn't making much money as it used to before, as a result of Apple and Samsung. Uh, Microsoft was not like Apple or Blackberry, where they had both their uh, hardware and software. And they entered the market with both hardware and software. Uh, so in order to gain that market edge, they acquired Nokia. Another reason for the acquisition was the transaction costs involved uh, with uh, working in an alliance. When Microsoft and Nokia were working in an alliance, they did face uh, many difficulties, software difficulties, cultural issues uh, in workplaces, patents, licenses. Uh, so <clears throat> they had a lot of potential, but because they weren't working as one, there, there were a lot of problems, but they were, the, the alliance was still profitable. And uh, <clears throat> because of this profitable alliance, they internalized Nokia. And by internalize, internalizing Nokia, they enjoyed uh, coordination of multi-sale proce uh, processes in the internal market uh, discriminatory they would enjoy discriminatory pricing after holding a market <laughs> a significant market share and market power in certain areas uh, as well as el eliminating instability and uh, uncertainty in the market uh, there were <clears throat> when Nokia was on its own uh, it, it was uh, well known for a bad customer after sales service even though the phones were reliable. Furthermore, Nokia did have its cost involved. Microsoft took a big hit on their stock prices. As a result, uh, Microsoft had a, a proper plan within a month where they right-sized the workforce. They right-sized the workforce and shifted uh, uh, their manufacturing pr processes to less costlier areas. And the analysts predict that Nokia would break even by uh, the year 2016. Uh, Microsoft uh, acquisition is a long-term plan to potentially derail a handset market leaders uh, who are already miles ahead, no doubt, uh, Apple and Samsung. But uh, the potential these two uh, uh, possess, the potential these two possess, uh, has the uh, potential to do that. Uh, if the resources are used uh, potentially uh, the decision is rational or not uh, it can uh, it only long term uh, only the years to come can say but given the reputation of both companies the resources involved and a proper management <coughs> and state of the art innovation uh, in the future they can lead to that goal that can lead to lead them to that goal thank you